Let's do a couple more equations to solve them. And, uh, you know, see, just work with this a little bit more because you're going to get a lot of these things. And this is, you know, one of the main things with mathematics, right? Solving equations. So let's say we have something like this. Now, there are two ways to solve this. In general, when you start out, most of the equations you get are going to be fairly easy, and all the fractions or common denominators are going to work out, right? That's, that's how you get started in mathematics. So the first method is initially going to be easier to do. The second method is cross multiplication when you're solving these types of things. And that's going to come in a lot, uh, that's going to come in uh, handy a lot more. Uh, you're going to end up using it a lot more when it comes to more complicated questions. I'm in general going to use cross multiplication. I'm going to cross multiply, get rid of our fractions, and solve for it. The other way to solve this is multiply this equation by the common denominator. That means multiply every single term in the equation by the common denominator. And what, what that does is it eliminates all the denominators. It eliminates the fractions, right? So for example, all of these terms, anything that's not, it's not a fraction is over one, right? So that's over one, that's over one, and that's over one. Now what's the common denominator between one, two, one, three, three, and one? Well, that's just going to be 6. So what you're going to do is multiply this whole equation by 6. Okay. So when you multiply this whole equation by 6, 6 multiplies every term here. x over 1 times 6 is just going to be 6x. 5 over 2 times 6, 2 is going to kill the 6 down to 3, right? Reduce the 6 down to 3. Let's just do this on the, let's just do this on the side here. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to have 5 over 2 times 6. Right. 5 over 2 times 6, that's just 6 over 1. Anything from the bottom can cancel anything from the top. 2 kills 6 down to 3, so it's just going to be 5 times 3, which is going to be 15. Right? So this becomes 15 minus, that's just 1, 1 does nothing to 6. So 2 times 6 is going to be 12. Now remember, when you're doing this, when the 2 kill reduces the 6 down to 3, this 6 is going to multiply the next term. It's not the 3. This is each, each multiplication is an individual operation that you're doing. Over here, 2x over 3, 3 reduces the 6 down to 2, so it's only a 2 multiplying this. So it's going to be 4x minus 3 reduces the 6 down to 2. So it's only a 2 going to be multiplying this. 2 minus 6 because it's just 1 times 6. What you're going to do now is, again, line up your equal sign, combine your like terms on either side of the equation. So this is going to add to this. This is just going to be 6x minus negative 15 minus 12 is negative 27. 4x minus 8. Now bring all your x's to one side of the equation. Take your uh, uh, numbers to the other side. So bring all your like terms to one side, the x's anyway. So it's going to be minus 4x. Grab that guy, bring it over, so it's going to be plus 27. So 6x minus 4x is going to be 2x. Over here you've got 27 minus 8, that's going to be 19. Right? Divide by 2, divide by 2, so x is equal to 19 over 2. And that's your final answer. Now over here, we didn't have to write down any restrictions because we didn't have any variables in the denominator. They were just numbers. And with numbers, there is no restriction. The only, the only time you have restrictions is if you have your variables, x's or whatever it is, in the denominator. Then, then it, you know, it can vary, variable. The number can vary, so you have to state your restriction on it, right? So for this equation, our solution is x is equal to 19 over 2. Now let's do the same equation with cross multiplication. It might add a couple more steps, but you'll see how it works. It just later on with larger problems, cross multiplication is going to be super handy. Initially, if you're doing these, solving these types of equations, this is in general the way that 
I've come across most students are taught in classrooms. And, you know, when it comes to harder problems, and one way you can become harder is if the denominators, the common denominator between these is, you know, not something simple, if it becomes something gigantic. So, for example, if you had the denominator, you know, something like, here, let's add a couple more denominators. If you had a 7 here and a 5 here, all of a sudden the common denominator becomes a little bit harder to find, right? So this becomes a lot more difficult doing it this way as compared to cross multiplication because the GCF, the, the common denominator, is, you know, it's not obvious what it is. Okay. Let's do this, solve the same problem. Let's solve the same problem using cross multiplication. So we've got the same problem. Now instead of multiplying this whole thing by 6, every single term by 6, and this, you know, getting rid of denominators, right? What we're going to do is use cross multiplication. That means combine everything here into one term, combine everything there into one term, and then cross multiply if we still have fractions. And we're definitely going to still have fractions, right? So line up your equal sign. The common denominator on this side of the equation is 2. So that's just over 1, over 1. You multiply this by 2, so that becomes 2x. That just remains as 5 minus 4. On this side of the equation, the common denominator is 3. So that becomes 2x minus 1 minus 3. Now, combine your like terms, right? So you've got, line up your equal sign again. 2x, negative 5 minus 4 is negative 9 over 2 is equal to 2x minus 4 over 3. And what you do now is we've got one fraction equal to another fraction. We're going to cross, multiply this up. And 3 is going to come up here and multiply both those terms. So it's going to be 6x minus 27. On this side, it's going to be 4x minus and the way we solve for this now is we grab this guy, bring it over, plus 27, grab that guy, bring it over, minus 4x. So 6x minus 4x is going to be 2x. And that's going to be 27 minus 8 is going to be 19. And divide by 2, divide by 2. So x is equal to 19 over 2. And that's how you solve this equation using cross multiplication. And this is basically, in general, going to be the method that I use because the equations that I come up with, I don't sit there and try to make them as simple as possible. I just write down numbers and I start doing them, right? I don't in general work them out initially to see if the answer is going to come out nice and clean or not, right? So sometimes I'm going to make equations up where the common denominator between the whole equation is extremely difficult to find. Well, not extremely difficult to find, but it's going to be huge, right? Because, you know, they might not have a common denominator between them until you get further and further. Or, you know, you might have to multiply them both, everything together to get the common denominator, right? So in general, I'm going to use um, cross multiplication because I find that it works much better uh, for solving equations, especially in real life, because in real life, numbers don't work out as nicely as, as uh, you know, they do in the classroom or, you know, the questions that they give you or on an exam, right? In general, numbers, you know, you get a lot of irrational numbers. And we talked about irrational numbers. You know, there's way more irrational numbers than rational numbers. Okay. And that's how you solve this equation using cross multiplication.